Abby. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mason Raleigh, WVCW's music director here, uh, talking with the amazing Mad Abby after a, uh, a wonderful chalkboard session. I guess first off, if you all would like to introduce yourselves, say what you play, and um, what have you been listening to recently? Um, my name is Mason Bragg. Uh, I sing and play the guitar. And recently, I've been kind of stuck in a box listening to the same stuff, but I really like the OCs uh, up there on the wall. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. My name's Garrick, G-E-R-I-K, for those of you wondering. Uh, I play bass, and uh, I've been on a Krongbin kick. My name is George. Uh, every once in a while, I do backup vocals for the band, and I'm their creative director. Uh, my favorite band is Starfucker. And uh, I also love the electronic dance band Roiksop from Norway. Uh, my name is Justin Wilbanks. Um, I play the drums. Recently I've been listening to um, a lot of Mahavishnu Orchestra, a lot of CCR, um, uh, the OCs. The main three. The big, the holy train. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess just to start off, uh, listening to your music today when you perform, there's a lot of like twists and turns, phases that your songs go through, uh, movements. How does the uh, sort of the conceptualization of a song begin? Like, how does how does a song go from like a thought in one of your heads to like an actual finished recorded product? Um, usually, like we come with like one idea. Like I might make something on the guitar. Sometimes it's like just a little piece or it's like a fully thought out process. Um, and then I like to say like, we like to chop it up and all have our own like take on it. Um, I heard this from a friend once, he said uh, musicians are like fingers on the hands, all individuals, but together at the core. And that really, uh, I try to stay true to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I guess in, uh, where does you all's part come in? The, the drums and the bass, is it just like a, like a jamming thing or is it like a big? Uh, definitely a, a little bit of both. Mason's a very raw guitarist and he can just go for hours down in the basement just kind of hammering away, making up different stuff. So I think where me and Justin like to come in is to kind of hone down all the different ideas and kind of find that diamond in the rough uh, uh, melody or bass line or drum fill or mm -hmm. whatever whatever the song needs. Mm -hmm. We feed off of each other a lot. Totally. It's like this big ball of energy and we're kind of pushing at each other and we eventually find something that works and then we just play it a bunch and then we like it or we don't. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, you all have been around since at least 2017. That was the first time I found a post on your uh, Instagram account. Um, if that's, is that outdated or did you guys start earlier than that? It was Loaded question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Garrick and I are cousins. Mm -hmm. um, we are the uh, he's the first person I played music with before like Justin and I met um, but we've been playing together now for a little over a decade we met in high school mm -hmm. and then um, full circle Garrick's been playing with us now for a little under two years I think I might be doing my math wrong years. but um, mm -hmm. but yeah it's just funny how everything works out like that so yeah we've known each other for a long time, long time. Mm -hmm. Do you find that that sort of cohesion with playing together for like a decade helps with the um, the sort of songwriting process, the live performance process? You all seem very tight knit, even when you're almost chaotically shooting off in other directions. <laughs> Is it you find that it helps a lot? Like like that? For sure, mm -hmm. totally. We're Definitely. all old friends, and mm -hmm. we we know each other really well. I think that's very helpful to like be able to kind of tap into like G's headspace or Mason's headspace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like we try to do a good job of being open, like, emotionally and knowing where we're at. And sometimes, like, in the past, I know that, like, we've learned that it doesn't work when we push too hard when, like, somebody's got something going on. So, like, we try to advocate to be, like, as open as possible so that way when we're in the music space, which to me is, like, a sacred space for us, that mm -hmm. if something's going on, like, we either put it into the music or we step away from it and... Mm -hmm. no need to push it mm -hmm. uh, sort of talking about your your music a little bit more uh, you played a new song for us a single that's going to be out soon mm -hmm. right um, what was the name of that again uh, Leech Leech yeah. uh, that seemed to be a lot more uh, dynamic a lot more uh, lyrics going into it I think mm -hmm. um, 
sort of, is this like a new, a, did you approach it with a different mindset than your other work or was it just sort of like the, um, cause it's, it's in preparation for a new EP, correct? Or a new album? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, what, are you sort of approaching it as like a new, new phase or is it just sort of continuing the cycle of music you've been making? I think so what we're doing right now is we're we have just like a bunch of songs and they kind of all they don't all like fit together but they have little subsects so we're, we're gonna we're gonna come out with three EPs here soon um, and we're kind of grouping them by like individual flavor and so that one is going to be an EP that we're we're kind of thinking right now is going to be all derived from like songwriting about like animals and different things in nature and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That song Cottonmouth, um, we started writing that like a month ago or yeah. something like that. Yeah, it's the second time we played it. Mm -hmm. I had a, um, a weird experience when I was six. I, so I'm from Louisiana um, and I was living in Baton Rouge during Hurricane Katrina. Our house started to flood. It, it was not like bad like New Orleans for sure, but we still got a lot of wind and rain. And our house started to flood, so we had to like go and dig a trench around the house. And while I was out there, I actually almost got bit by a cottonmouth. <laughs> we just went back inside. Um, but we were kind of thinking in the headspace of like um, something that looks like it'll help you at first glance might not always be the best option for you. And um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that pretty much that. Uh, you you mentioned uh, that sort of these you found these things these songs sort of fit together into different parts. I guess to use sort of a artistic metaphor, sort of like Legos, which seem to be very prominent in a lot of your uh, your sort of theming. Your pedal board seemed to have Legos on the front of it. Uh, you said it was it was made by you. Uh, yeah, and oh. Mason and I built that pedal board together from mm -hmm. scratch. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you also had mentioned that you're working on uh, like a music video suite that will become like sort of like a short film about Legos. Where did that sort of idea come come from? So uh, a couple years ago, we made a, mu a Lego music video um, for uh, an older song from Mad Abbey, uh, My Sight is Clearer. Um, and we felt that it was really successful in that the creation of it was, was very good. So we decided that why not take it one step further, be a little more ambitious and use all four of the songs from one of their upcoming EPs and make like a visual album mm -hmm. for the EP itself. Um, and uh, this one will be slightly different than the previous video. It's gonna be a little more psychedelic, um, Alice in Wonderland-esque. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty ambitious and mm -hmm. it'll probably run about 24, 25 minutes long. So really? yeah. How's the process of working on that been like? Well, I'll say that uh, we've spent about three weeks so far in this newest video and we've got a minute and 20 seconds done. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Labor of love. And a mm -hmm. lot of post-production left to do as well. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, You all uh, have been performing with a lot of different bands, I think, across the spectrum. Of music, I know you performed recent, semi recently with a uh, Sad and Death Cult. You perform with a lot of bands from across the uh, sort of musical spectrum. Do you find that that sort of eclecticism influences your own music? How does it do? Do you ever find yourselves coming back from a show and being like, we should incorporate this or this? For sure, that's a great example. We are working on a tune called Rat Bastard, and like <laughs> uh, I, we saw a Saturn Death Cult, which I, I had never seen before, but I've heard their name, I've seen their posters everywhere, and like immediately after that, I like went home, and like the next day was like, okay, I'm making a, like a heavier, like more metal song, and so yeah, I think it definitely has an effect in being, um, cause we, we went to VCU, um, and being in the house show scene, which we still love to play in, definitely had a lot of influence on our musical choices mm -hmm. for sure. Cause the camaraderie and like just the, the absolute chaos, like having a floor cave in and like cops are there, you don't get to even play your set, but just being there and being a part of it has this like raw, just unfiltered chaotic energy that in some cases, I think has definitely had an influence on our music. For sure. 
Um, you did all laugh at the joke about, or the thing about the four caving in. Is that a, a story? Did that happen? Um, I, we did not play that show. I was with one of my other friends, and him and I used to like skateboard around to different parties and house shows, and we went to this one that was packed, and like we didn't even get to go inside, but the, people were running out. Cops were everywhere because the floor had caved in, and actually one of our good friends who plays in Drook, Kalen Brown, his band at the time, was playing when that happened, I believe. And I, yeah. before I met you guys, I was in there. No way. Yeah, oh, that's wow. crazy. Yeah. That was, that was <laughs> China Street, right? China Street? Yeah, in I Oregon Hill. That was like really close to where we record our music, too. Mm-hmm. Minimum wage recording studios. Lance Cole. Lance Cole. Yeah. No, yeah. so no, yes, no BS Brass. No BS Brass. Yes, sir. No BS Brass, no BS recording studio. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Shouts out. I'll be expecting a check soon, Lance. Like <laughs> <laughs> zooms on you. <laughs> Thinking back on your on your origins a little bit, where did the name uh, Mad Abbey derive from? Um, so Abbey is in a monastery, um, Madness in the Abbey. Justin had a you were subleasing your room so, to yeah. the philosopher and painter that was like studying here at BCU, and we were like trying to come up with band names, and he helped us. Tell us how in the '60s the Sound of Music was banned because she was like exploring her sexuality. And so we, we had the name Mad Abbey before we had meaning to it, but uh, I think for me at least, it's don't conform to what other people expect of you, stay true to yourself, um, and I think that's the attitude of rock and roll, which doesn't necessarily um, have to be a genre of music, I think it's an attitude, and I see people do that all the time, whether it's like a skateboarder, or like somebody that's painting, or like a little kid that's like, no, I'm not going down the slide, I'm gonna do the monkey bars. It's like, yeah, you do you, kid. <laughs> so. Is there anything in the future you all would like to shout out, promote, coming out soon? Leech. Leech, yeah, Leech. Leech. September 29th. <laughs> September 29th. I don't know why we, that wasn't instantaneous from all of us, but this, this, this is happening. It's Three, easy. two, one. Leech. Leech. <laughs> yeah. It's about self-empowerment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Any any shows, any dates coming up or anything like that? We're playing at Gallery 5 on the 9th of September. We're playing with uh, Roughshod, Bone Machine, and a band from out of town. Cherub Tree. Cherub Tree. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Cherub Tree. We have a Appreciate you. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be awesome. And then we're playing the 14th um, with a band called Dana Ives from New Orleans. And mm-hmm. then we're playing with some other local. F- I'm not gonna go check out our Instagram, but we're playing the mm-hmm. 9th, the 14th, and then we're doing a release show at the Cactus Shack on the 29th. If you're in Richmond, come through. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be awesome. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's it. Oh, and Peppermint House the day after on the 30th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. B- busy month for us. Yeah, yeah. Busy month. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, from all of us here at uh, WBCW, uh, I'm Mason, uh, and they are... Mad Addy! Woo! <laughs> 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 <laughs>